other than discussing how you feel like a sack of potato and what your weight is, you probably have quite a bit of experience talking about forces in terms of causing motion, right? When you pull on something, it starts speeding up. When you push on something that's moving, you can slow it down. So this is where we make use of Newton's second law, where the sum of forces, all the forces acting on a system, will give you the acceleration of that system. Note that these are both vector quantities. Whichever direction the stronger force is pulling towards, that's basically where your body or system, that's the direction that it will accelerate towards as well. We'll launch right into a two-dimensional problem because we've dealt with 2D vectors before. And we know that because these are vectors, we can break them down into X and Ys and deal with them by components. Let's rewind a bit and look at the question itself. We have two people pulling on this child and with a certain amount of force, certain direction. And part A asks us, well, let's assume there's no friction for now, because in order to find out how to deal with friction, we have to find out the direction that the body moves anyways. And you'll see how that goes in a second. So let's ignore friction for a minute. So the only thing we have are these two forces acting on the body. And to employ this equation, it's good to keep track of all the forces that are in play. And so that's why we draw this thing called the free body diagram. For our level, our free body diagram will mostly start with a dot. Even though this body is nice and big, we don't really consider any rotational motion or anything like that. So we basically consider the center of the body, what it is doing based on all the forces that's acting. On a free body diagram, I will remind you that we only put forces that act on the body. We want to list them all out so then we can work out the sum of forces. That's the ultimate goal of the free body diagram. We don't include things like acceleration and velocity. That just clutters things up. All we care about is the sum of forces. In this case, we have two forces pulling. So we have F1, which is 45 degrees that way. And then we have F2, which is 30 degrees that way. And since they define our angles like that, let's define positive x that way and positive y that way. So we have a coordinate system to work with. And technically there's gravity pushing down and the floor is pushing up, but we know those cancel out because the sled isn't flying off the ground or caving into the ground. So we'll just look at it as a 2D plane problem for now. Once we have defined our x and y, we can of course decompose each of these forces into their x and y component and treat this separately because we know the two perpendicular directions can be treated independently. So let's do that. For x, we have f1 cosine 45 in the positive plus f2 cosine 30 also in the positive, in both in the positive x, and that's equal to max, m being the mass of the system being moved, which we're told is 49 kilograms. So we can really quickly figure out what ax would be. Subbing in the numbers, we have 10 newtons plus 8 newtons, all over 49 kilograms. And we know a newton is a kilogram meter per second square. So the kilogram cancel out, we're left with meters per second square as we expect. And we get 0 0.2856. For y, we do a very similar thing, except in this case, these are all the opposites of the angle. So we use sine, and f2 is negative because it goes downwards. So it's negative y is equal to may again. So ay is 10 newton sine 45 minus 8 newton sine 30 all divided by again 49 kilogram but there we get that we have ax and ay now 
so we can put it back together and find the direction. AX being positive goes that way, AY is a smaller positive and goes that way, so we know my overall A goes in that direction and we can find out the magnitude by Pythagoras and the angle with inverse tangent. So we got part A done. Without friction, Now, in defining the direction, they didn't give us any north, south, east, west, or anything. So, I'm going to have to go with saying that it's counterclockwise from positive x as defined in the picture. Fairly simple. Usually follows the same flow anyways. You list out all the forces that are acting on your body using the free body diagram. Decompose all the forces into x and y. Then you can find the acceleration in x and y separately, then you can put it all back together. Now friction. Let's look back at the question again. So they were very specific about the fact that the direction of the friction is not specified. Well of course not, because friction always acts opposite to whatever your velocity happens to be at the time. Friction always wants to stop your movement. So that's why in order to do the problem with friction, we have to ignore it, find out which direction the body would be moving, and then we can put in friction and deal with it properly. They also add an extra line here that assume the saucer is initially at rest. This is important because the friction is not opposite to your acceleration, it's opposite to your velocity. Fortunately, as long as the initial velocity is zero, then both of these will be in the same direction. So given that without friction, our body is moving that way with 12.4, well let's use 12.38 degrees like that, then we know that the friction must act that way with 12.38 over there. So there, we have our friction. So let's add that to our free body diagram. We still have our x and y. We still have f1, same 45 degrees. f2, same 30 degrees. And now we have next another force, which is your friction force. And that's 12.38 degrees like that. And we do the same thing again. We have once again got f equals ma, we've listed out all our forces, so we can work out the ax and the ay separately. Sum of forces x plus a negative force of friction, cosine 12.38 degrees. This is 10 still, this is 8 still, and this is, as we're told, 7.5. And the mass is still 49 kilograms, so we can quickly solve for AX by dumping the 49 over, doing a bunch of calculator work again. We get that, and ultimately 1.36 meters per second square. Similarly for FY, again, keeping your sign proper, both the friction and F2 pulls downward, so that's why it's plus a negative. Newton divided by kg, and once again we get our AX and AY. Putting them back together using Pythagoras, and then the angle, and that works out pretty much what we had before, as we expect. I mean there's some rounding errors, but it shouldn't have changed. Because specifically in this case, the friction acts along the same line as the overall acceleration would have been. So same procedure as last time, if you have three forces or 50 forces, just follow the same flow. Now I talked about there was a shortcut you can take. And that's this here. Because we know already that even after we add the friction, the acceleration is going to be along the same line as before. So since all the interesting stuff happens along this axis, that is 
12.38 degrees away from my x-axis, it's actually quite good to try and line up your axis with wherever your acceleration is going. Let's call that x prime. So that's also the same angle, of course, because this is a 9 degree angle. We still want orthogonal axes. So under this new corner system, we, the, the forces still acts as the same, but the angles are slightly different now. So we're interested in this whole angle, which is 30 degrees plus 12.38 degrees, which is 42.38 degrees. And this guy is 45 minus 12.38. And then finally, we know that the friction is at 12.38 degrees from the original x-axis, so it just goes right along the x-prime axis, being negative. And this actually saves us a lot of work. In these axes, or any axes that we choose, this will still hold true. We have a slightly different angle definition now. But you can see how nice it is already. We have one less decomposition to take care of. The forces is still 10 newtons and 8 newtons and 7.5 newtons. That doesn't change because no matter how you switch the coordinate system, it's not going to change the length of your actual vector. And bam, out comes the acceleration. That should look quite familiar to you. And then for AY, there's nothing for the friction. So the only thing we got left is the other two forces, which is that, and you see they pretty much cancel out as we expect them to because AY should be zero. So you can see how picking your corner system to coincide with acceleration saves us quite a bit of work because it always gives us one equation out of the two that would give us a zero on the one side, which is easier to solve. Than otherwise. And there might be less decomposing and recomposing involved, which is really neat. In this case, I would just answer this as the acceleration 0 0.139 meters per second along the positive x prime direction as defined. So again, making good use of the physical situation. If you know which way the acceleration goes, set your corner system to coincide with that. It'll save you quite a bit of work.